Okay, it's Jim Lou. <clears throat> right, I've come on YouTube to give a life testimony um, as a born again Christian, not to name drop at all this time, as I've been told not to. Um, but I'm going to give a, a testimony of my life, starting from the age I can remember, um, which was two and a half. Um, I was born, apparently, it was a hard labour for my mum. Um, at the age of two and a half, one of my granddad's close friends of the family uh, touched me sexually when I was two and a half. It was something to do with my granddad's garage. Um, I was always taking my clothes off when I was little, always running about naked. And then from that moment, I had a hernia, I had a high ex hernia, and my mum used to say, it's like every time you have a rageful temper tantrum, Jim, used to, I was like the devil's child, apparently. It used to come out, this hernia used to come out, it was right near the top of my my noon, so they they operated on it, and I remember on the operating table saying, um, I don't want the man's plaster, get him off me, because I'd already been touched there before, so I was scared. I remember the journey on the way home with my mum and dad looking at the radio and the red lights in the car and the Renault, it was an old Renault silver one. So then I grew up and got into the occult, got into witchcraft, got into white witchcraft, uh, did blood covenants. Totally messed me up, um, gave my life to Freemasonry and then I, at 13 years old, went to Duke's Priory because um, my mum couldn't cope with me, they thought I was gone mental. Um, a lot of alcohol abuse, drugs, um, a lot of emotional damage as well for my mother growing up, bless her, but she didn't know. My dad was always working to try and get bread on the table. My mum was like a single mum, really, trying to bring my brother up, my sister up. So there's my testimony. That's We're not even there yet. This could take all day. So from... Duke's Priory, I went to Rayleigh in Southend, um, which had actually closed down, so I just caused like a crisis going up there. This nutty 13 year old with bleach blonde hair and like double D boobs at the time, looking about 25, a lot of sexual immorality, um, oh. then a lot of drugs, um, and then I got moved from there to, to a Young Offenders Institute. Um, and in there, it was disgusting. I spent nine months in there. Some of the members of the staffs were perverts. Quite a few of the members of the staffs were perverts. I enjoyed a lot of crap in there. And then from there, I got sent to Greencorns, um, which was like a care placement where you have staff look after you. So I got given like a free bed, lovely posh house with like built-in wardrobes. And then I met someone there, a member of staff, I nearly said his name. And I had a relationship with this member of staff. He gave me a lot of drugs. He said I seemed older than I was. I was 14, he was 26. So theoretically, I was like, I was a virgin. Theoretically, it was statutory rape, but because he said I was beautiful and he loved me, I fell for the whole thing. So then I come out of there after loads of overdoses because I didn't want to drop him in the crap. He was stalking me. Um, and then I got moved to... Um, where did I go from there? I got my own place in Colchester. I escaped the care system with a boyfriend at the time. I worked in an Italian hotel. I cleaned. Um, I rode my bike everywhere. I grafted really hard. Um, still a lot of drugs and alcohol. But then I sorted myself out, was going to AA, went and worked with the elderly. I did not like it there because the way they were treated, so I harped up with my opinion about how they were treated in the elderly home. I thought it was disgusting, like the elderly used to press their buzzers and the stuff as I was just leaving. I think it was wrong. And then, um, I left. <laughs> and then from there I went to, um, from the elderly home, and working in Colchester, I moved back with my mum and dad. My mum still couldn't cope with me. She was a Christian at the time, and I was just off the rails. And we lost my granddad. But before all that, I was in a violent relationship. Um, stabbed someone in the foot after that violent relationship. Um, I'd also, in between that era, gone out and got drunk and got drugged. And gang rapes 
and there was a, an Irish tinker there called Emma, and her, all, all their witchcraft, they put me under satanic witchcraft, um, and I cut her hair off, and I pushed a Muslim into a fire. Um, his name is Mohammed, and he was gang raping me, so I pushed him into a fire, and he's not alive anymore, that didn't actually kill him. Someone else tried to kill him afterwards, not that I know who that is anymore. Um, so then from that night, um, I had post-traumatic stress. I was under the satanic curses of the witches. So, you know, the Bible says the curse will be reversed. And at the moment, every witch, wherever I go, who rises against me is being cursed by God himself because the Bible warns in Colossians 3, do not worship anything and any idols above Jesus and God. And they're all talking to the dead. They're all putting angels before gods, they're, 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 all this stuff, they double him, it's just, they're all being deceived, or some of them know the truth and they just like it, they use it to their own advantage. So, um, yeah, it was supposed to make stress, so then I got put, after I went to Holloway Prison for um, six months, I got put in a four year secure, high secure hospital where they diagnosed me with 20, 30 different diagnoses. I probably saw a hundred psychiatrists in that span of staying there. They didn't want me out. The staff used to say I'd be in there when I was 50. Used to wave the keys in my face. Again, a lot of sexual abuse going on in there. If I was to cut for the people that were being sexually abused, i.e. in wheelchairs, um, I'd get put in seclusion. I'd get the kosh, the truth jug, they'd inject me. Um, they were giving me uh, drugs that I had to have ECGs for because the drugs could have actually killed me. Um, and I got out of there in 2009, I conceived my little boy and uh, my precious, precious miracle, Joshua. And his biological dad, unfortunately, still has a lot of demons, so he's stuck in there still. Um, I'm not allowing him to see my son until my son's a lot older and understands, so I can explain to him what's actually happened. So I got out in 2009. I was advised by a sweet as member of staff, Garrity, to go to Clare House. Went to Clare House and the tribunal panel, the woman got so bored she started putting her lipstick on in her pocket mirror and said, there's nothing wrong with you, you can go. And my dad took me home and he's Aston Martin and it was one of the happiest days apart from me giving birth to my son of my life. It, it, I was in shock. After four years of being institutionalised, it's hard, you get out and the smell of petrol is a lot, adapting to normal life with a child as well, a newborn. It, it was a shock to the system and having no father figure there, but I did it. I was a single mum in a flat for six months until I met my uh, husband. And, well, he's just controlling, stalking, not right, um, jealous, threatening, behind closed doors. It's just all emotional abuse, and this is what has caused my breakdown this time. Um, the spoke the post traumatic stress came back because he kept sending me text messages saying I'm closer than you think. Um, also, it was situational because I wanted to homeschool my son, and the the school said we we were um, underpinned by the government. They kept saying, and it was like, Pff. and now they're backtracking what they said. They're lying, and the thing is with me, people can't lie to me because I see straight through it. I see their bloodshot eyes when they lie, I look people in the eye. So anyway, sorry to the judge if I'm doing another um, bizarre YouTube, but this is just to tell my testimony to get the truth out before I go to London and have my <sighs> thousand flipping evaluation again. So I'm just, you know, telling you my testimony live on here. So um, you'll probably all watch it. And there you go. I'm now free. Oh yeah, I forgot about the Derwent Centre. Then they put me on the Derwent Centre, which was like torment, full of floridly, demonically ill patients. I didn't get much sleep. Social services were calling the shots over my son. It's just, um, I'm in a state of shock as to why I'm going through this, why my son isn't with me. I just think... Apparently I've got religious mania for believing in Jesus. Apparently I'm delusional because other Christians have told me I'm a prophet. Uh, it's been prophesied, it's been prayed over my life in many churches for the many past years. I can't help what other people have told me. I'm not the type of mother that says I'm a prophet and goes and kills her kids or goes and says a shampoo bottle's told me to drown my child. That's not me. 
I know that you do get people like that in their mental health system, but it's not me. I'm a born again Christian, and the one thing I'm, I can boast in, I might have effed up, right, in my marriage. Yeah, I might have had my part to play in that. I might have effed up with finances. I might have effed up in areas of my life, but one thing I'm boasting is I'm a good mother. Okay, and I haven't got to justify or vindicate myself in January the second of court because God will do that for me in my faith. Um, so yeah, I'm just trying to get across to people all these misdiagnoses, all these years was due to post traumatic stress from a gang rape. I was duct taped. I was put in the back of a car. I was drove to Epping Woods by the mall. They tried to take my family's money. It was like a ransom on my life. And I, I got out. I got out with the power of Jesus and the drugs that they drugged me on wore off. And I saw they were dabbling in witchcraft and divination. Um, and I, I kicked back. I pushed him in the fire, the one who was trying to wait, rape me. And Emma, the traveller. Well, I just cut all her hair off. Because satanic devil worship and witchcraft is do a skinhead, skinny hair off. That's what they, that's what they want you to do. And Emma, the Irish tink, has been totally exposed now. She used, she's actually stolen my identity, Gemma Fish, and Emma licenses. This is what she does. Bless the Lord.